Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It's fabulous to have you here. We're working on a Damascus steel rapier. We're working on the most complex and intricate handle that I've ever made. We're fluting the thing. I'm hoping to do a twisted wire wrap. We're gonna get straight into it. We're gonna start filing. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy. I am thrilled with how this is turning out. It is extremely difficult because it's oval. Trying to judge the evenness of the lines is a nightmare. It's roughed out. I think we got the bulk of the file work done on it, so the major material removing is done. You might be wondering, why is it that I polish this before touching it with files? Because I was probably gonna damage it. I did damage it. I had a slip with a file right here. It's been touched with a 180 grit, and I knew I'd probably slip, so I knew the final polish might end up needing some touch-up, but by having the final polish done, any touch-up that we do need to do is minimal. Now, one of the things that I'm gonna experience as I polish this, now that the flutes are cut, is it's gonna soften over those nice sharp corners of the flutes, and I want those corners to be sharp. I want them to be neat and crisp, and so that's why I'm now gonna go back to the belt grinder, and we are gonna polish the outside again, before we finish the flutes with sandpaper. Here we go. It's looking beautiful. I'm really pleased we got the scratches out. Now, here's some sterling silver wire, which I'm planning to use. What I want to do is I <clears throat> I'm going to need to be a little more careful. Okay, so now we've twisted some of this sterling silver wire to have a look at how it looks. And my eyesight isn't even good enough to look at it. But it for sure looks beautiful. I wanna take some measurements. I wanna see what is the diameter and what is the consistency of the diameter. 0 0.9, 0 0.952, 0 0.955, 0 0.948, 0 0.948, 0 0.944. So it changes a little bit, but it's within half a thou or something. In, uh, in inches there. And so I think we can work with it. Now, as far as I understand, again, from, uh, from Julian Antunes, one way of inlaying this into the handle is using a triangular file. But I imagine another way would be using a saw. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little trip. And I'm going to buy myself one triangular file. Maybe some other files too. Files are useful. Always get files, always buy good files. And I'm also gonna try and see if I can find a saw that is maybe 0 0.9 millimeters in width, or maybe 0 0.8 millimeters in width, and maybe we could do a press fit into a saw cut. Maybe that would be another way. And so, it is into the truck we go. Right, so I got these two things, awfully expensive, but uh, one's a coping saw, one's a triangular file, I want to try another place though, see if I can get a smaller file, maybe a more kind of, maybe a better saw. Right, got a cheap needle file set. Pretty disappointed I couldn't find a whole lot else, but uh, that's what you get for needing something right away and not planning ahead in advance to be able to order the right stuff. Ugly dugly, so we're back from our little trip. I have a coping saw, which appears to have a blade that's thinner than our little twist of wire. I've got a set of needle files. I dropped my set of needle files and I also have a triangular file. Would have been smart to order this stuff in advance because it would have been a lot cheaper. But as I said, there are two methods that I want to try for getting this wire in the handle. One of them is making a V groove and then the wire sits in the V groove. The second method is we make a saw cut and try to press the wire in to the saw cut. Like this. We're gonna try them both. We've got a little scrap of African blackwood. We're gonna try and file a little groove. We're gonna try and cut a little groove with a couple different saws, coping saw first. We're gonna see how it works. If we can press it in, if we've got to file it, you know. I should probably remove the cardboard. Attempt number one with a coping saw. Feels pretty easy to stay on track. So it feels pretty uh, controllable. That's good. Let's give this wire a little clip and see how she sets. Oh, it's so close, but it's too thick. Maybe a little hit from the hammer. No! Maybe, maybe it's not too thick. Maybe the circle doesn't fit as far down as it needs to. Oh, hello. Hello! Oh, yes! First time, are you kidding? 
It just worked? Let me try and cut a curve. I, I don't cut curves, there aren't curves. It's straight, it's just twisted. How can I do that? I just think we can do it. Oh, I have an idea. Let's do a wire inlay on a file handle. Yeah, it's just a smidge on the thick side. Smidge on the thick side. So cutting into this soft wood on this curve here feels like that that's thicker than this one here. And I don't know if that's a factor because it's soft wood or a factor of the shakiness of cutting something that's curved, but we don't quite get the same press fit here. So that's a concern. I would really like this wood coping saw to do it because it's going to cut wood much better. But I'm going to see if this little jewelry saw Obviously, we'll probably find that it's in fact way too thin. It's only 0.26 millimeters thick. But maybe with, uh, with some gentle persuasion from a hammer, it would work. Definitely won't work, not a chance. I have no faith that this will work. It's tricky, it's gotta be just the right amount of press fit. Can't be so tight that I mush the silver in trying to install it. And you see how tight that is. There's no chance that that silver would press in there. I have an idea. I wonder if I can surface grind a coping saw blade. Okay, so I got the little pins out of the coping saw blade. Now we go to the surface grinder. <laughs> now I'm gonna put the coping saw back together, find these two pins, put them back in the holes. How am I gonna do this? I should not have put both pins in my hands at the same time. Comment down below what the odds that I can actually have both pins in their respective holes without needing to go into my dowel pin chest. Let us know your thoughts down below. Oh no, this is so difficult. I can't believe I just surface ground a coping saw blade. Come on! Oh, no. Oh, yeah! Yeah! Yes! It's in! Oh my goodness. That took some doing. One down. One to go. Worst case scenario, today I learned how to assemble and disassemble saw blades. Actually no, worst case scenario, this pin ends up in my eye in three, two, few. There we go. Okay, so I might have to watch a YouTube tutorial on how to put a coping saw back together. No, I'm joking, we can do it. I wasn't joking. Uh, oh, it. I really should have bought spare blades. <laughs> So let's see what happens when you take off 55 microns or so. We find out in three, two. Yeah, I don't think that's tight enough. I mean, it's close, still movement up there. I just think it could be tighter. Back to the surface grinder. Okie dokie, there we go. Okay, good, good. We took another, another thou and a half off. Let's see what it looks now. Here we go, attempt number. Attempt number four for a press fit. Ow, that was my thumb. But, okay, that is bang on. I like that. It stays in there. A little bit of gentle pressure pushes it in. Not too much that we deform the wire and we can get it to sit flush with the hammer. Brill, I like that. I can play with it and fiddle with it and it doesn't pop up and it doesn't pop up, that's good enough for me. Let's mark out where it is that we got a saw. Okay, so I'm now putting the handle back. We now know that indeed our coping saw blade that has been surface ground will allow us to have a good press fit, which I'm very pleased about, because it means that we can get ready for the wire inlay. And now, I don't want to do the wire inlay and then have to polish the flutes. So the next step is indeed remounting our handle onto our little spigot here, giving it the old tighten so that it doesn't move. And we're gonna take the same diameter files that we used. We're we're gonna wrap sandpaper just once around it and we are gonna go probably from 180 grit all the way up to maybe a thousand grit in every single flute. This is gonna take a while, but ladies and gentlemen, let's roll the time lapse.
shockingly, I've only gone and done it. I am shocked. As I said, shockingly. Completely shocked. I have just cut eight grooves with a saw. How it was possible for me to do this, I have no clue. Let me run you through what it is that I did. Now on my first attempt, I tried using a triangular file to get it started, because it was too difficult to get started with the normal coping saw. Using the triangular file was very difficult and took a long time. My first groove took an hour and a half to cut, because I used the triangular file, and then subsequently a jeweler's saw, and then finally the coping saw. Interestingly enough, of course, even just the next one, under a third of the time, in fact, I think the next one only took me 20 minutes, and each subsequent one only took 20 minutes from there. Thankfully, I found the technique very quickly, and that was start the very beginning of the cut here with a jewelry saw. I surface ground the blade just a little bit more, and flipped it around so it cuts on a push stroke, and then in that initial groove, I just pushed my way around and made sure to keep turning this as often as possible so I was working in a consistent spot so that we could get a good groove and keep it even and keep it running down it. In terms of depth, I have no idea if I've got an accurate depth the whole way around. However, once I made my full pass, I then made sure to eyeball down each groove and check that we had consistent depth the whole way down, which is difficult. Now, there is one problem. That is, of course, I did not just make eight cuts perfectly without a single slip. We got quite a few things that we need to fix up. See those little scratches in there? That's where I slipped with the saw. There's a problem. Right in there, I made a double cut and started sanding it already. Need some more sanding. Big problem. Do you see those nasty gouges right there? That's another saw slip. So, I have quite a number of mistakes that we need to fix, and it's led me to question whether it was a good idea to have polished the whole thing because I now have to go back in and polish bits of it again. I still think, all in all, it was a good idea to polish the, well, the whole thing beforehand. And now, all I have to do, really, is go from 320 grit back up to 1200 grit in a few select places, blend it all, make it all look neat, and hopefully mean that this thing uh, looks about as good as I can make it look. You know, it's not perfect. It's absolutely not perfect, but, I mean, that's... That's, that's part of it. I can't make it perfect, but I can do my absolute best to make sure that it's a hell of a lot better than anything else I've made. And I'm looking forward to the next one being even better. And frankly, I'm completely shocked and utterly proud of myself and thrilled to have put the amount of effort in to make it turn out like how it is. And I'm so excited for what it's gonna look like when it's silver, uh, when it's silver wire wrapped. For now, however, first step, take that 320 grit sandpaper, work our way back up to 1200, and, uh, and then we'll be back to chat a little bit about the next step. <laughs> A year ago, if I had thought that in 365 short days I would have been able to apply myself to carving this handle and cutting the flutes, I would not have believed it. Uh, even just a week ago, you know, as I was just starting this project, I never would have imagined that I would have been actually been able to do this. And uh, I'm overjoyed and I'm just truly, truly thrilled each day, with each day here in the workshop, I can bring you along and share this experience. I can document it, I can show you guys what it's like to jump in at really what feels like the deep end, work your hardest, try your best, and come out pretty surprised. This thing is not perfect. I've managed to fix most of the mistakes. The fluting is far more even than I could have ever imagined. And I'm really excited for the next step because on tomorrow's episode, you're gonna see me attempt to take this sterling silver wire, twist it, and inlay it eight times in this. Keep it secure. Hopefully not break too much wire. Hopefully not break any flutes. Hopefully, continue making this the best project that I've ever made. And I'm looking forward to bringing you along for that. If you'd like to support the show, please go get yourself some merchandise, alexsteelshop.com. Got a wonderful selection there. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, but only if you want the behind the scenes sneak peeks of how this project is evolving in the stories. If you don't want the, uh, if you don't want the spoilers, don't watch the stories, but definitely follow me on Instagram. Thank you. It is a real, real honor to share this with you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on the next episode.